what interests Mickey Rourke about his character? He was a man who, he, he's just got nothing left except just sort of, he's dead inside and he, he just does what he wants to do and he just exists, you know, it's like, he's not enamored by all the bullshit. He's very much real and, uh, but yet there's a side of him that's so cut off that he's damaged, but he's still free. Every time I see you in, in films that you've been doing lately, you look even more gratty, more aggressive, more ugly. Isn't that something almost morbid and self-destructive in you to choose not only mentally but also physically to degrade yourself in a way? Yeah, I don't really... I'm very disillusioned. I'm very unhappy that it doesn't matter about the kind of acting that I do, that, that they, don't, they don't appreciate that. So it's almost like I don't really care anymore because they're not worth what I give them. Do you understand? So, along the way it is almost like a <laughs> deterioration on film. <laughs> I mean, in a weird, you know, kind of way. Uh, and I'm not doing it really, it's not like an image thing anymore, you know, or maybe, maybe when I was 19, when I was young, it was cool to be a certain way and now almost it's, I have no control of, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, if I don't let it out in the characters, I'll go nuts. Uh, one of my favorite line, lines is uh, when she says, I've discovered you, when he says, well, I always thought I'd be discovered after I was dead. We've discovered you. Oh, well, I had an idea that I'd be discovered after my death. What happened to you along the way? The weird. Sometimes I just get tired of thinking of all the things that I don't want to do, all the things that I don't want to be. How come nobody sits next to her? She's crazy. Crazy? Oh. <laughs> You're the damnedest barfly I've ever seen. Hobbies, none. Religion, none. Education, none. What the hell are you doing? The word asks your sex, you've written none. Well, hardly none. Your life is just a bunch of cans. You can't work. And you can't fight. I could look at a woman's legs for hours. I got nothing but time. You know, every time I get with a woman, something happens. You're Henry Chinaski. I'm one of the main producers of the Contemporary Review of Art and Literature. We've discovered you. Oh, I had an idea that I'd be discovered after my death. How does it feel to be on the other end? I smell it. Perfume. Where's the bedroom? <laughs> Come on! Yeah! Baby, look around. It's a, it's a cage with golden bars. Either you get out of here or I'm gonna peel you away from your perfume. We don't have to be barflies right down at the grave. Mickey Rourke. Just one thing. I don't ever want to fall in love. Faye Dunaway. Don't worry. Nobody's ever loved me yet. Barfly. Life on the Edge. As seen by Charles Bukowski. Directed by Barbe Schroeder. I guess when I did Barfly, I didn't even know who Bukowski was, you know? Then as I kept getting hammered about doing it, I read a couple of his books, which I, you know, I enjoyed reading, reading them. I met him. He, he was okay for a drunk. Uh, um, 
the director was an asshole. Um, Schroeder, he was a prick. How do you explain what a, what a prick is? He wasn't, you know, just a prick, self-centered prick. No, but what did you really think of it? I thought he was a prick. <laughs> I liked working with Faye Dunaway. That was fun, and you know, the dialogue was interesting. The character was, you know, it was what it was. It was almost time to do something else. I just started doing other things with my life at the time that I enjoyed more, I think, than going to work. I think by the time I did Johnny Hampson, I, uh, acting became a, a boring job. You know, it became laborious. It became, uh, it was very unfulfilling. It was just not what I, um, had any any bit of uh, respect for doing it was just it just all and I don't even know if it was it was the acting itself it was maybe it was just where my head was at 